guys welcome welcome to the live stream everyone if you can hear me just let me know all right so let me know briefly if you can hear me so we can just dive into what we have to do today it's been a very busy day and um, uh thank you for joining the stream okay all right so welcome i can see um six persons just joined okay so let me know if you can hear clearly so we can just go straight into what we have to talk about today right welcome 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 everyone okay so i'm waiting i'm waiting to know that you are you can hear and see me okay maybe not see me but at least you can hear me now let me know waiting for your comments okay so this is um school of poetry the sixth episode and um so we're not able to meet last friday because of uh, the program that we do have at then redeemed so we do have this holy ghost service every first friday of the month so that was why we could not hold it and i actually sent a i sent a post on the community section of the of the blue of the youtube Okay, so can you hear me please? I can see greetings, greetings, Mr. Daro to me. Can you hear me? I want to know that you can hear me so we can just okay. Alright, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for that confirmation. Okay, so so that program I decided to scrap hey. the first uh Fridays of the month. So we'll be having it for every month that has four Fridays, we'll be having it for the second, third, and fourth. And anyone that has five um, Fridays they will be having it from the second to the fifth all right so quickly we have to talk about the opportunities in poetry I don't want to waste our time because I've had a really tough and rough day um, went out in the morning and um, came back to find my daughter not feeling well so I had to take her to the clinic and we returned home past eight so it's been a very very busy day so quickly, opportunities in poultry, uh, beyond raising broilers, beyond raising uh, layers for egg production, broilers for meat, and maybe noilers for, that's the dual purpose breed for both egg and for meat. Beyond all those, what are other opportunities are there to, to like embrace and enjoy in poultry? Because actually, Poetry has become something of um, something that is capital intensive, and some people are not really even finding joy, or maybe they are not satisfied with what they are getting from it. that niche that they are focusing on. Because poetry itself is a the big box, the big basket. The value chain is just broad, and you need to know how you position yourself so that you can get the best out of it. Okay, so today we're just going to be touching some. Today we're going to be touching some things that you probably have not talked about, and some maybe you have perceived it on the surface, but somebody telling you may help you drive that idea deep down, so that you can, you know, pursue it and maybe get something good out of it. Got uh, so good through my trainings and um, that's organic poetry training and some other trainings I've had about it. Masterclass on or poetry feed formulation. Through my trainings, I've been able to discover that some people actually it's it's like the, their highs got open once I mentioned some of these things, some of these opportunities. And um, I just wish that there was, there's somebody, even if it's just one person, that will get something out of this <clears throat> this evening's excuse me this evening's session. All right. So without wasting our time. Thank you all for joining Mr. Tiamiu, uh, Paula Stewart, Jalit, Emmanuel. Yeah, all of you, thank you for joining and uh, let's just enjoy the session together. 
right? So I think the first opportunity to talk about is actually that you have to stay glued to DIY Agri. He's your, he's your poultry success partner, so I don't know why you should not stay glued to him. I don't know why you should not subscribe to the channel. I don't know why you should not click the notification bell so that you can be the first to get notified when new videos are released. I don't know why you should not tell people about the Iowa Agri. I don't know why you should, you know, start that farm operation without consulting with the Iowa Agri. Okay? So that's like the first opportunity that you have, you know, having somebody that will bring value or rich content to you to your doorstep or to the comfort of your mobile phone and you watch and hear things that you probably would have learned in the space of two years and you just like keep it in in just two three videos so that's a great opportunity that we should, we should all maximize right so we are together and uh, we should all enjoy diy agri and another thing that i would talk about is being a broker yeah some of us actually have the fan base. Some of us are. Some of us belong to organizations. We belong to uh, societal, maybe not societal gatherings, but at least organizations. For example, people who, who belong to the Poultry Association of Nigeria, uh, that organization. People who belong to related organizations that you have. You have following. You have people. You have people that are doing these things that are either consuming birds. They have eateries, they have restaurants, they have hotels, or people that are producing birds, that is farmers, and all those. So if you have those connections, you can actually maximize it and turn it into a business. You can connect people, you can connect farmer to the consumer, or to the person who's going to buy it and use it in the restaurant, in the hotel. You know, that, <laughs> that work as as crazy as it may sound, it's, it's actually a millionaire or even a billionaire job. Yeah, depending on the farm base that you have, depending on the number of people you can collect, the opportunities are just endless. It's more like somebody working for the insurance company, you know, they promise them so much. As much as you can bring, your, your earnings are just like unlimited, as much as you can keep bringing people. So if you can connect a lot of people together and you know farmers are in many cases desperate to sell so if you can connect them with the right buyer i tell you while they are focusing on raising the birds um making sure that their hens are laying eggs you are focusing on getting people who will buy it from them and if i do that well i think you may be looking at starting your own farm of say 1,000 birds capacity, 2,000 birds capacity, maybe you currently have 200. You can add this as a side also and connect people. Before long, you can eat some deals that will give you a lot of money and will help you to increase your own farm. So that's one thing that we can do as uh, people in the poultry sector. You can actually be a broker. You can do it actively and you can do it passively. Yeah, what I mean, what I mean by passively is you can be in your in your regular job, in your nine to five, and because you just have people who are doing these things, you can still connect people. WhatsApp is there. Uh, the WhatsApp status. A lot of us don't even know how to use it. Somebody like me, I don't use the status as much as I should. It's not something that comes to me. Like I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about WhatsApp status. I don't even check WhatsApp status. Uh, status of people regularly. A lot of time my wife will show me, have you seen this person status I've seen? I don't really have time for it. So there are people who are good at using it and you can use it to your advantage. You can post things and people ask about it and you just connect them with the person who is going to sell to them and psh, your percentage is there. Okay, so we can be get, getting our pots as a broker or as brokers and we get something good. All right, so the next one we'll be talking about yeah, we've just discussed about the broker. You can become a broker. And uh, the next one we are talking about, uh, let me remove this thing so I can. The next one we're, we're talking about is uh, brood and sale. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in my organic poetry course that um, 
the when you when you look at this the economics of raising birds for just two three weeks for those who, raise, who do food and stay with broilers in this age most of them actually do it they just, they just raise the best for two, two, two to three weeks nobody does four weeks that's a joke just name the birds four weeks old birds nobody actually does four weeks maybe if they are doing cockerels they are raising cockerels they are raising them for four weeks but nobody does broilers for four weeks I'll call it insane. How can I raise birds that will be already 2 kg and sell as good and sale? No. So you can do good and sale and the quantity of feed they will hit in that two, three weeks period is very little. You can even you can convey your feed on Okada. <laughs> you can convey your, your feed in your car. But you know if you are raising just 500 birds and you are raising them to maturity, it will announce you have to buy loads of feed. Part, part, part. But with brood and sale, 500 birds in just two, three weeks won't eat much feed. So you can just go today, bring in two bags, and nobody knows. You know? So you fire business, but then the profit is also there. The profit is there. The mortality during that time is very low. Most of most people record much mortality after four weeks. So if you know what you're doing, mortality in that um, two, three weeks time is usually low and they feed they don't eat much it's just easy it's easy and if you have your connections if you have your regular buyers you see that as as you're getting the birds with two weeks they are already fully booked oh sorry about that sorry about that because i connected something to my computer i'm not even hearing any background music yet so i thought it was off sorry so sorry about that. I believe it's okay now. And thank you for telling me. Thank you. All right. So, you know, I decided to use my mic with my computer today. So because it's plugged into the computer, I wasn't hearing any background music. So, so sorry about that. Thank you. All right. So that's that about Bruder. So it's something we can look into. And, uh, you know, I have people who have been following me and have not started raising broilers at all. Some of them are scared about the market. So this might be a starting point for you. you. Might just try to get the hang of how to brood or raise chicks from day old to say two, three weeks, and this will just be a good one for you if you can do it. Uh, you can start with fifty, and before long, people get to know you. Uh, I know this will be crazy to those who are already raising two thousand, three thousand, five thousand birds. Yeah, this may not be for you. Yeah, in fact, it's not for you. It can never be for you. Okay. So another thing, another thing you can do as maybe somebody that is starting up and especially if you have gone through my organic poultry course is to, is to prepare herbs and spices. Yeah, you should have your herbs and spices. If you, if you do that, it's going to help you. And I found something recently because a lot of people try to dry their herbs and spices uh under the sun yeah they just expose it to the sun and you know the sun eat it and the leaves dry the the ginger yeah the ginger dries over a period of time maybe a few days depending on the intensity of the sun but a lot of us miss it in the drying process a lot of us miss it in the drying process uh, I found something online. Let me quickly see if I can get it right now as we go. I found this method of drying online. Maybe some of us have seen it before. And um, because the sun actually destroys some of the um, nutrients, some of the active natural blessings that are inside the plants, the sun destroys some of them such that when the, this person reports that, okay, I use this app for my chicks and they recovered. You tried it on your home farm and nothing happened. Yeah, you might have destroyed some valuable uh, phytochemicals of phytonutrients. That's plant-related chemicals, plant-related related nutrients that are deposited naturally into the plant. You might have destroyed them in the process of drying. So there are a lot of chemical processes that happen. Okay, let me 
let me see if i can get that uh I just put the link in the comment section for us to see. Okay, I found it. So this could be, this could just be it for some of us. It could actually help us. I've not seen anybody who says the background music is not fine or there's no noise again. Okay, please help me confirm if the, if the music uh, is. Let me just put it off. Okay, so for the solar drying, I've actually sent the link, so you can find that link and just just go through it, and it could help you to dry your herbs and spices, and you can actually package it. For those of, yeah, some people are they are practicing organic poultry farming, but those spices are actually scarce in their regions. If you have it in abundance in your area, you can just gather lots of it and keep drying and keep drying and package and you know it just will be to a lot of people and you are selling. Some of us have these things in abundance, and it's just wasting away. You can't even use all of them. So just try as much as you can to embrace solar drying you can find somebody who will understand the mechanism and design that thing for you and you can just start selling it no sound okay thank you all right mr emmanuel thank you okay so you can just start to dry those herbs and spices and begin to begin to sell it to people so that's another business opportunity uh, as a matter of fact i've told some people in my organic poultry course and some people have started doing it and it's blessing their pockets already. Abs, if you know how much we buy abs and spices, you know that these things are expensive. A small pack, you'll be hearing 800 naira, 1,005, 1,002, just a pack of 100 grams, 200 grams. So depending on how scarce or how available that thing is, it will decide, it will decide the, uh, the cost for you. Okay, so that's a very good one. And um, the next thing we'll be talking about, a quick recap, we've talked about broking. If you are a broker, being a broker, that's you connect sellers to buyers and buyers to sellers. You know, we just start, uh, stand as the intermediary. And also you do brood and sell. You raise the best for just a few weeks, two weeks, three weeks, and you sell. So it reduces the cost of production and in case you are not able to go into raising to maturity, especially when you want to do up to like 500, 400, 300, maybe you're only able to do 50 to maturity. Then you can just embrace brood and sale. You do up to 100 or 200 and your money even comes back to you in a matter of two weeks. So the turnover is quicker, the harrow high is fine and everything is just moving. So that's a good one. And then apps and spices, how you can sell herbs and spices so the next one we'll be talking about now is feeds this is actually a bomb in the industry this is a bomb in the industry uh feed cost is around 70 percent of the total cost of production that is if you are spending ten thousand naira on your chickens feed alone will take seven thousand naira and meds cost of the chicks and all that will take the three thousand naira that is Amazing. Yet, not many people are producing their own feed. Not many people have tapped, have been able to tap into the area of being a distributor or even a producer of feeds. So this is actually a void. It's a void. Most of the times people are calling me, they are saying, I don't want to buy feed. This particular feed is not in the way, it's not in this, it's not in Port Harcourt, it's not in the Nubu, it's not in that. <sighs> I just tell them, most of them I tell them, I say, do you know that this thing is actually a business opportunity for you? It's a huge one. What if, if you have the capital base, you can even borrow money for that purpose. If you, if you are transacting a lot, you see banks will be sending you messages, <clears throat> excuse me, that you should come and take loan. Yeah, you can take loan and go into such businesses and start supplying people. I tell you, 
the report from farmers is that there's no feed, there's no feed, there's no feed, there's no feed. What does that tell you? It means people keep buying the feed. Many of these centers are self-feed, many of these distributors, once the feeds come, in the, the next five hours, it's all booked. People are rushing in to carry their own, and after two days, everything is gone again. So most of the time when you go there and they say there's no feed, you have to drop your number and say, please call me. Once there is feed, just tell me to come and pick it so that I will get mine. That tells you that the feeds are moving. People are buying them. Farmers don't even have enough of it. Once you have access to a company that has good feed, then you can just apply for distributorship and begin to distribute around your area. Ensure that there's no other person selling the same feed very close to you. That uh, like opens you up to a wide and big market. So that's a big opportunity. In case you have not thought about it before, I thought this might, this might just be hate for you. So you can consider it's just to get a warehouse or a store that can take up to. Most of them require, I think their requirement is about um, 600 bags. As long as you can take up to 15 tons. Yeah, is that 600 bags? I think 15 tons is what it, it has. And one ton is 40 bags. Okay, so if you have that space, yeah, sorry, sorry, Lillian. If you have that space and you have the financial muzzle, yeah, <laughs> because it takes a lot of money to buy just 40 bags of feed, not to talk of 600 bags. Okay, so especially if you are not doing rebates, you know, it's crazy. But if you have that money or you can get that money somehow, just try as much as possible to consider selling feed. And also you can go into production. As a matter of fact, I'll be sharing something ah, awesome very soon. I'll be sharing something awesome. So I got talking with somebody. I helped him with some things and um, he was doing a research. He was trying some things out. And it turns out that you can actually spend, you can spend 30% less on, oh, this is crazy. Turns out that <laughs> if 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 you're buying, for example, if you're buying, I'm I'm not going to mention any company name here. If you're buying a feed for let's say nine thousand five hundred naira, turns out that you can actually produce a feed for maximum of six thousand five hundred naira and get the same result, if not more. Yeah, in the worst case, if not more you will get the same result, if not more. And that feed that sells for 9,000, that's not the exact price. I'm just quoting 95. That feed that sells for 9,500 Naira is actually like the best. It's in the category of the best. Maybe not the best. It's in the category of the best. And now you can make, just by using the simple ingredients that are readily available, you can make a feed at, 600 6500 naira 6500 naira as they would call it in the US and get the same result this is crazy so imagine that excess of 3000 naira is going to be added to your profit at the end of the day so that is that is amazing i'm going to be sharing that very soon and you know you all are just going to be wowed by it all right, so the experiment is going to be completed shortly and we are going to be blessed by it. I'm going to be bless, blessing you all with that result and how we got there. Okay, so you can actually go into feed. What I'm trying to say is that you can actually go into feed production yourself and start to sell feed. It's not only company A and B, I'm not going to mention any name, that can sell feed. You also can have your feed production company as long as you know how to do it and some people have taken my organic poultry course and also even my um feed formulation master class and they can tell they can testify that we we dealt with feed formulation to the to the tiniest part of it so all those crazy things that people talk about it i was able to simplify it to a point that at least most people understood it okay so feed production and or sales and distribution so you can you can produce your own feed 
imagine if you are producing that feed and you are selling it at 7,500 naira. It's giving people the result that they get if they buy 9,000 naira, 9,500 naira feed. And then you, you are produ producing it at 6,5 and selling it at 7,5, gaining 1,000 naira on a bag. People are getting massive results and they are rushing back to you that, who? how did you do it? See, that is crazy. That's crazy. That's massive. All right, so I believe I'm talking to somebody and you might want to take that up. So once that uh, research is completed, I'm going to be sharing it with you. I'm going to be sharing it with you and we all will enjoy it. You know, the best thing at this time is to try to reduce the cost of production as much as possible because there's a lot going on and it's like farmers are choked. Farmers are choked. The feed production companies are choking us. The arteries are choking us. The economy in Nigeria generally is choking us and... We just have to do something. So this might be one of the things that will help. And it's coming from your poetry success partner. So if you are here to like this live stream, please, I want us to go ahead and give it a like. Please like the live stream if you think you are enjoying it. Yeah, welcome everyone who has just joined us. Please like the live stream. Click on that like button if you think you are enjoying us. All right, so I think I have one more. Yeah, one more thing to share before I take some questions. And I'm just going to call it a day because I've had a stressful day. Ah, I just want to go and relax. All right, so the last one, somebody actually talked about this and I just smiled. It's not that easy though, but... I smiled. I just I decided not to write anything on the comment. The person left the comment on um, on YouTube. I think I should find it so that I don't say what the person did not say. Okay, sorry. Let me find it. Just give me twenty seconds. I'm gonna find the comments and um, read it out. These are the things I should have actually put in a slide, but. The day was so, so, so rough and it was unplanned. I had to take my parents to passport office for renewal of their passports. I forgot the date of the appointment and I was just told that it's going to be today. So I had to forget about everything and I just had to take them there. And on getting back, Coco, some of us know her name, my daughter, she wasn't feeling fine. So I had to take her to the clinic. Okay, so this person said, uh, the person is uh, Joe Lassisi Lassisi. I discovered that teaching people how to raise chickens on YouTube is more lucrative than raising the chickens. <clears throat> Let me cough before I, do this, before I address that. Teaching people how to raise chickens on YouTube is more lucrative than raising chickens. Even, if, even though the person was trying to make a point, but... We could we could read meaning to it in any way that we want to. But I I I decided to sit down and rethink. I thought about it again and I said, well, I don't want to know what the person meant. I'm just going to be taking it as I want to take it. So if the person meant that it was easy doing YouTube videos and all those things, yeah, let the person start making those videos and let's see how lucrative it can be. All right. And uh, I don't know how I don't know how many times the person has sent me money for calling it lucrative. I don't know how many times the person has sent me money. Uh, it's just funny. It's funny. But then let's go to the positive side. Let's forget about whatever the person might be uh, meaning to say. Let's go to the pos positive side. You can actually teach uh, people how to do these things if you know it. I'm talking about if you know it. A lot of people just because of money. That's one of the problems that we have in Nigeria. People do things not because they want to help you, not because they want to impact, not because they want to make a change, not because they want to make an impact. They do it because they want money. They are hungry. Yeah. Most of the teachers of our students in school, they are teaching because that is the easiest job to find. Most people find themselves teaching because teaching is just available. Because teachers are always leaving. The schools are not paying well. And teachers are always leaving school. So there's always vacancy. <laughs> I've been in places where 
they just keep coming to the business center and say, okay, help us type vacancy, blah, blah, blah. The person had to ask, is it all the time that you put up vacancy? <laughs> oh, oh, God. So teaching is just one of the jobs you easily find, and that's why people are doing it. So most people who are doing it are doing it for the money. The same thing with many other jobs. Even the farm workers that we have, most of them are just working on the farm because they want the money. So someone will want to ask me, of course, what else should they want? Why, why else should they be working? No, no, it should be beyond. Yeah, I know that the jobs are not there, but the reason why we work should be beyond the money. If it's just about the money, then you get the money and it's all finished. No fulfillment, no nothing. There should be something beyond the money that, yeah, the money should just be a compensation. And that is the kind of person I'm talking to. If you know it to the point that you feel like you want to teach people, you know, sometimes people try to play on my side. They try to side me. They try to defend me. They try to uh, support me. And they'll say, somebody else is doing this. Somebody else is doing that. And I just, my, I just say, that those things will happen. People also will do the things that I, I'm doing. Some people will even, and that's bad though, some people will even use my material, take my book with my cover and sell it at ridiculous prices. No, that one is bad, it's bad. But then you can learn from DIY Agri, you can add your own, your own knowledge might even be more than mine, and you can just polish everything and you can turn it into, it could be a course, it could be a YouTube, session you can have trainings online no i found i found that people actually are in search of this knowledge so if you have it and it's there you can actually monetize it you are free to do that so it's acceptable and that's one of the things that will we keep thriving over the next couple of years because the knowledge is just coming out people want more people want more knowledge People want to be better at what they, whatever they are doing. Those who are doing um, photography, they want to get better. They are taking photography courses online. And the internet has helped us to be able to reach out to lots and lots of people. So if you think you have skill and come off it, even if it is not poetry, even though I'm saying this is uh, opportunities in poetry, forget about it. Even if it is not poetry, even if it is something else that you are skilled at doing, you might just want to consider teaching other people if you are skilled. If you know that your knowledge in it is just so much, when you sit six people down or ten people down that are also in that same niche, if you start to talk, you feel like, wow, your head is swelling because you feel, oh, it's like my knowledge in this thing is weighty, is heavy. People are feeling what I'm saying. Then you might just want to reach out to lots and lots of people. I just go online, teach people. No, every one of us need more money yeah diy needs more money i don't know who is saying amen to that so diy needs more money everyone needs more money so teaching yeah thank you uh idiot ismail teaching is more lucrative yeah teaching is more lucrative if you want to say it like that but i would just say teaching is lucrative there are lots and lots of things that you can sit down online in this age, there are some things that you can do and just sit down like this and money is breathing. Money is just pumping into your account. So I just feel teaching is actually good. If you know what you're doing, you can actually teach others. And it can be that thing that will help you achieve your goal of having 5,000 layers, just laying lots of eggs for you, 10,000, 20,000. Some of us are struggling to push out 100 birds, you know, 200 birds. And actually, we are also helping the economy in our own corner. Yeah, the industry is not just for those who can raise thousands of birds, hundreds of thousands of birds, even those who are doing 100 and 200. I'm with you all. I'm with you all. Whether you are doing it small, whether you are doing it big, I'm with you. As a matter of fact, sometimes it pays to stay with the small older farmer because they feel you they are able to experiment and follow along with whatever you are teaching and you know 
the result comes and you are happy that you see their growth. You see how from 50 births, they are able to go and crescent into 200 births. I've, I've been with people. I've been with people who call me and they will say, wow, you helped me. I was able to do 300 births this time. No mortality. Somebody was saying, was it yesterday that they raised uh, 200 births? I think just four mortality and it was the first of its kind. And you know, those are the things that spur me to do more okay so these are the things that you can do and there are actually opportunities that you can take there are a lot a lot more opportunities that we can talk about especially if you go into that crazy line of organic poultry there are lots of things you can do if you are yet to learn organic poultry in its fullness please i i, I employ you to try as much as you can to take that organic poultry course. And where is that my book? Oh, it's far, it's far, it's far. I can't reach it. In the organic poultry course, I get to give you that book, although not add copy, that my complete guide to organic poultry farming. I get to give you the beginner's guide to successful broiler farming. And after that, beginner guide to organic uh, to successful broiler farming in the same book are lots of organic medications that you can use that will help you. And uh, apart from that, I get to show you how to raise turkeys from day to maturity because turkeys are actually different from broilers. If you know how to raise broilers from day to maturity, it doesn't tell you or inform you that you can raise turkeys. They can be crazy. They can just die on you. You like don't die on me, don't die on me. And they still die. So there are things you have to do and those things are packed inside that small book. Uh, so those books, I give it for free to those who take the course. The course itself used to be a 10 days training. I used to sit down at uh, 7 p.m. for 10 days. So I did the training, I think, for like four times. I think we had four and I was like exhausted. I didn't have enough time for church. I didn't have enough time for family. So I decided to crash it into a course. I tried to put it on Telegram and I structured it into modules. Uh, day one into module one, day two into module two. So I did it well. You have pictures, you have videos. You have lots of things that will make it sync. Yeah. So after that fourth batch of online face-to-face, or uh, WhatsApp, it, it used to be WhatsApp before, if I moved it to Telegram. So after that, I decided to make it a course and anyone who joins now will just be moved to that Telegram call, uh, platform and you have access to all the materials, including the books. The books themselves, those three books cost 8,500 Naira if you want to buy them individually. The first one, 3,000, the second one, 35, the third one, 2,000. Put together is 8,500. So I give it for free. And the cost itself is just 7,500 Naira. All right. So if anybody is interested, you can just reach out. I saw earlier that somebody was asking, how can you, how can I contact you? I'm just going to put up the number on the screen now. I prefer WhatsApp, please. Sometimes I might be busy doing other things and I don't want to pick calls. So sometimes I'm recording videos and people are calling and they'll, they'll reach out to me later and say, we called, 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 you did not pick. I was recording videos for you, yeah. So if you call and I didn't pick, just try as much as you can to be patient and also send a message. Send a message on WhatsApp, say blah, 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 blah. Try as much as possible to be elaborate. If you are trying to call me to talk about a thing, when you write a message, just say, okay, I wanted to ask how this, I wanted to say this, so I would know when to call you. If it's something that will be brief, I can quickly call. If it's something that will not be brief, then I'll say, okay, don't worry. When I get home or when I'm free, I'll call. So I think that's just a good way of reaching out to somebody that you believe might be busy because God help me. Uh, hopefully we'll expand and I get people also helping me to uh, respond to questions and all that. Okay, so that's the number you can reach out to and um, you'll be attended to. Also, the Feed Formulation Masterclass, we're going to be having another one soon. There's something I promised those who attended the first one that I've not given them all 
yeah, I know I'm hoeing them and I'm I'm raising up my hands and saying sorry. Okay, so there's something I promised them. I actually wanted to polish some things and I also wanted to have this other um experiment, the result of the experiment that I mentioned. I wanted to add it to all the things that I will be giving them. And for other reasons too, that I may not be able to mention now. Okay, so that's that about that. If you want to take the next one, you can just send me a message too and I'll book you down for the next one. Okay, so now is the time to take your questions before I fly. Now is the time to take questions. So if you have any questions for DIY tonight, We've talked about some opportunities. I talked about how you can decide to be a broker, a middleman, and you can connect sellers to buyers or buyers to sellers and get your own cuts. That way you can raise more money to maybe start your own poultry farm or expand your poultry farm, your existing farm. You also, you can do brood and sale if you have been trying to start and you know the cost is just carrying you. You've asked for cost analysis and you are scared. You saw bills and you you, you are scared. So I start with brood and seal. Just try to master uh, brooding of the chicks from day old to maybe two to three weeks for broilers. And for layers, you have to do it, do more than that. You have to do like four to six weeks for layers to stabilize them. Okay, so you can try to do that. And uh, one thing that will help you, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, my YouTube page, and you go to the playlist. I have a playlist for, let me try if I can see it now as we talk. I have a playlist for broiler brooding management series. Yeah, that playlist is, is rich. It can actually help you if you're trying to if you are trying to do brood and sale and you don't know how to go about it, it can help you. Now, I think Boiler Brooding Management Series, I don't want to waste our time. I think it's somewhere there. Just try and go through my channel. Yeah, maybe that's an assignment. And maybe as you're even looking for it, you see other things that will interest you. So just go to my home page and just, okay, let me help you out with my home page. Okay, I'm coming. A moment, please. Okay, so just go to my page and um, look for, just search for broiler brooding. So. You see videos are address it there. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I remember I'm moving you. <laughs> I remember I'm moving you. Uh, I've not forgotten actually. I've not forgotten for a second. I'm just asking myself, wow God, these people are so patient. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So that's it. You can just go to the home page and check for. Uh, Lead commerce, you're welcome. Just check for broiler brooding, and you'll see videos that talk about it. And um... okay, so questions, please. Questions quickly. Oh yeah, we thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of. In fact, a lot of people want to deal with me and um, they want to, maybe they want to buy something and the kinds of questions they will ask me are like, oh God, how else can I prove myself to these people? You know, there's doubts and people are just scared to send their money. Somebody called me today and wanted to, uh, was it cheese? Yeah, wanted to buy cheese. Told me of how he has sent money to somebody for 350 birds and the person, after receiving the money, just phone number not connecting again. Some other person, he bought 1,000 or so. The person sent very bad chicks and 
the person was aware of it or something. So, but we thank God for some of us that are trying our best and we believe that the good will spread. The good will spread. Let's all train our children to be good people so that they can represent the nation and represent us wherever they get to. All right. So I think we all have to start from our homes. Let's train our children well. We may not be able to correct all that is going on outside there, but let's build the next generation into what we want to see. All right. So if there's no question, DIY will disappear because he's so tired. However, I won't I won't feel fulfilled if I don't answer a question tonight. Okay, so let me have your question. Just keep the questions coming. Let's quickly select some of them and we're on to bed. All right. Welcome, Arnold from Cameroon. If nobody's asking questions, I'm going to play that music back. <laughs> All right, so please throw your questions in. Throw your questions in. And if you're here to like the stream, if you're here to like the live stream, please go right there and hit the like button. Hit the like button. Oh, there's actually a standard. There's a standard for this person is asking about the, the height of a layer pen. <clears throat> there's a standard for the cages. I think this, the cages should be around 16, 16 inches each of the cells, each of the units. That's the part that is holding the chicken. I think it should be around 16 inches. It might not be exact, but it's around 16 inches. Yeah. So what now matters is how many tiers? We have two tiers. We have three tiers. Tiers is just the the step. You now you might have one here and the next one here and the next one here and the next one here. Yeah, just like that. So some have four tiers, and I've even seen some that have five tiers. But five tiers has to be automated because you have to climb before you reach the uppermost tier. Uh, even the four tiers is not that easy to operate manually because you have to stretch to reach to to reach to the uh, the fourth tier. But three tiers is the most common, and the third tier is just is usually around five feet, so you can operate the the fourth uh, the third tier at your eye level the high level of the average person the average person who, who is just around five five in height uh, less than six feet so you can operate it at the high level but if it if it is four tiers you have to start going up and five tiers oh that's like unreachable manually so that's just it. There's a standard. People don't just do it. There's a standard. So those who manufacture it, they, they, they know the standard. Except maybe you are trying to improvise, you're trying to use wood to do your, so you have to go and mirror. You have to go and mirror the regular one. You have to go and mirror it, take your carpenter to the place and mirror it, try to take the measurements. All right. Okay, you mean a deep lit and not the cage itself. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't I didn't read really the the later part of it. Yeah, anything depending on your location, because there are places where there's lots of wind, and of course, if your house is so high and it's not really strong. If crazy winds come and it can take the whole roof, so but the, on the average is uh, around nine feet. If you have nine feet from the roof level to the uh, floor, it's okay. And you know that floor, you still have some some two feet or one and a half feet of block, the skirt, the block that uh, that holds the the chickens inside. And after that block is the netting. 
So they block or help you to prevent water from entering. That's rainwater when rain falls. It doesn't just enter into the pen. But you don't want the fence, the low fence to be high. Maximum of two coaches of blocks and just about 16 inches is good for that too. The lower, the better, especially for this hot climate. So nine feet, if you can go 10, you go 10, but don't go beyond 10. Don't go beyond 10, except you know that you are building a high on structure, but for wood, as a matter of fact, most of the wood that you get now, <clears throat> you can't go beyond 9, 10, except you double the distance. <clears throat> okay, so... Okay, so if you think I've addressed your question, please just let me know. All right, quickly, let's take this. What is the difference between broilers for meat and their parent stock? Mm -hmm. Broilers for meat are young. <laughs> the parent stock are older. They are parents, yeah. And they are tougher. The meat is tough. The meat is tough. So usually parents stock, they don't raise them like we raise the broilers for meat. They don't give them finisher diet like that. They take grower more. Yeah, they take they don't they, they don't live on finisher because they are not ready to finish them. You want them, you just want them growing gradually and you want their life to to be prolonged. Yeah. So you they, they live on grower, a special kind of grower, not the regular grower. They live more on grower. So that helps them to build tough meat and especially the age. A breeder stock or a parent stock can be up to two years. So, <clears throat> you know, when you, eat, when, you, when you get that to heat, it's tough and it's massive. So that's the main difference. Just the age and the diet. That's the main difference, the age and the diet. All right. Yeah, Mr. Ndubusi. How can we undo indigestion in broiler? Indigestion. Okay. How can we undo indigestion in broilers? Yeah, indigestion is okay. They've eaten, the feed is not digested. Yeah, just help them to digest it. Uh, sometimes we use in organic poultry, sometimes we use uh, fermented feed, we use lactobacillus, we even use ACV. Anything that can help, and sometimes you have to add more fiber to the feed. If you add more fiber to the feed, it will help in the movement of the feed through the intestine, down until they pass it out as feces, and the part that will be digested will be digested. So. For better assimilation, better digestion, you need lactobacillus in the system, good bacteria, probiotics. So if you can add lab to their water or you serve them with fermented feed, I don't advise you to serve fermented feed to layers that are not, that have not been eating fermented feed before. Yeah, I, I actually plan to do a video to caution people to not do that because if your layers are laying and you serve them with fermented feed, they have not been hitting them before, the production can crash from 80% to 20%. Yeah, that's how bad it can be, it can get. So layers are very sensitive, you want to be careful with them. All right, so back to the question, just give them something like lactobacillus, a probiotic, or you can use ACV also to help them. It cleanses the system, it helps in digestion. And uh, what's the other thing I mentioned? You can add fiber, yeah. You can add high fiber uh, ingredients to their feed just to aid the digestion, the movement of the feed particles in the intestine. So that works, that works. And sometimes it can be more water that they need. Yeah, they may just need more water. Water is good for digestion, yeah. So you can just check it. If you know that they have access to water already, then it's not water that they need. 
you need something else. So we want to add lactobacillus, the probiotic to their water. Or if it is broilers, you may want to serve them with just some fer fermented feed. You can check it out and see if it works or not. Fermented feed just means that the nutrients are more available and it solves the issue of indigestion. It is easily digestible. So, and the waste also moves out easily. So I believe I've, I've answered that. Okay, somebody is asking a question that relates to what we have discussed today now. How much is brood and sell <clears throat> per chick? Yeah, you can sell each chick for around 1,200, 1,500. Some people even sell up to 1,800, depending on the age, the size of the chick. So even last year, September or thereabout, I helped my pastor's wife to get some birds brood and sale from a client of mine actually and she gave us for 1800 naira but they were three days to four weeks that's three days and um four days yeah three days and four three weeks and four days yeah they were three weeks and four days and she sold it for one eight but when she saw them she was so happy she had never got anything like that before until this, she's still looking for that kind of offer. So it's crazy, but she got it like that and she was happy. So it can be one, two, but what, what is the most important thing is um, how much you do buy of your chick, how much have you spent on feeding and drugs, how much profit do you want per bird? <clears throat> Nobody else should tell you how much you sell your product. Just be modest in your pricing and ensure that you know all that you have spent. Do the costing and after you have removed the cost price, then just add your own and you'll be fine. Which organic medication can I give my brothers after taking the 12 days vaccine? Well, I don't know the program you're following. Normally, if you if you're following my organic poultry chart, there has to be a chart that you're following. So, once you take the vaccine, you just go back to your chart. So, I don't know what you what chart you're following. So, it's maybe hard to recommend. If they are not sick, they don't have any ailment that you want to quickly tackle. Then, after the vaccine, I think what you should just go to is multivitamin, anything to boost their immune response because a vaccine it works more on the immunity so if you can boost their immune response their immunity then that should just be the next thing you want to do after vaccination both before and after vaccination except they are sick so if they are sick you just swing into action and try to attack the disease so to some extent poultry farming is spontaneous you just attack the things that happen and sometimes it's not just what diy says Sometimes just responding to what is happening at that moment. If you're able to respond to what is happening, then you understand the language of your birds. And that is what matters. Once you understand the language of your birds, forget it. The charts that we give is just as a guide. But if your birds are speaking this language and the chart is going this way, then at that point, your birds are the best teachers. It's not even DIY. Your birds are the best to listen to. Once you can listen to them, you'll be fine. At that point, if they are saying this and DIY is saying this in his chat, DIY is the wrong person to follow. Yeah. DIY is only educating you to guide you and make sure that you are guided. But when you understand the language of your birds, you have nailed it. You have just nailed it in the business. All right. SBC says, I think brood and sale should be sold per kg. The ones I bought last were about half the size they should have been. Probably the runs of their bunch. <laughs> Couldn't that lady that sold or some beds? Yeah, 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 yeah. She actually didn't mean to sell them at that age. It was because I was the one that made the request. So she was like, ah, how can I refuse my guy? Okay, come and take it for one eight. <laughs> 
And you know, when people know that you sell good birds, that's one thing that people don't know. A lot of people use inferior feet because they know that they are going to sell the best off. So they're like, it's not coming to me. Yeah, I can sell anything out as long as I get my own share, my own gain. So you should not go after that. You should try to use good feet that when they get the best, the performance they will get even in, on their own farm in the space of two weeks, they were like, wow, wow, this is huge. So that is the kind of customer they want to go back to. Till today, if I tell my pastor's wife that that client has birds, even if she has birds, she will say, oh, yeah, please bring more. So that's it. People love good things. And if you can give it, they always come after you. So people do that. People sell crazy birds. And that's bad. You should not do it. All right, so uh, Mr. Undubusi is asking again, how best to boost brother immunity from one week to, from week one to maturity, I guess. Yeah, you can boost immunity in my organic poultry course again. We have immune boosters. Yeah, we talk about immune boosters. And uh, there's this, Okay, what should I say now? <laughs> There's a lot trying to fly into my head from organic poetry world. Yeah, and I'm trying to say, okay, calm down, mister. Calm down, mister. Okay, generally some immune boosters. Garlic is an immune booster. Garlic will boost immunity. Garlic, you can have a blend of garlic, honey, uh, scent leaves, all those things. You can just have a blend of it. And if you have neem, if you have access to neem, if you have access to aloe vera, they are massive. They are massive. They are massive immune boosters. So those things will help. However, it is important that you know the dosage. And even DIY does not have the dosage of everything he's using. Because from time to time, I'm doing experiments. I'm doing experiments. So there are many figures just trying to fly. If I had planned for organic poultry, I would have had to jot down some things. I myself, if I want to do some medication, some treatment, I have to consult my manual. I have to consult my books. So I will not be able to tell you, okay, this is the recipe blah, 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 for immune booster as long as I'm not prepared for that. However, I can mention the uh, ingredients. Garlic is there. Oh, manna. There are plenty, plenty immune boosters, but Stand alone, neem is an immune booster. Aloe vera is an immune booster. I mean, I talked about aloe vera in uh, a video I made, I think, three videos back. Yeah, so if you have been following, you will, you'd have seen that video on aloe vera. Aloe vera is a great immune booster, a great one for that matter. And garlic is also good. Garlic is good. All right, so do we have any other one? I don't know what this question means. Does parents talk have its dial? Mm. I don't understand that. So please, you can you can push it back in a clearer form. Oh 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 oh! I think today we will still take it. Oh, it's even more. <laughs> we have gone past one hour already. Okay, so we'll, we'll be running up soon, but I'd like to take a few more. Okay, please, what is the implication of feeding multivitamins all through the life of a broiler or turkey? What is the implication? Yeah, there's the cost implication, number one. There's the cost implication because you use money to buy the multivitamin. Even if you are making the organic one, you actually, maybe you not buy sometimes if you get the fruits from, if you get the waste or so. But there's going to be cost in a way, maybe transporting it or something. So the cost implication is one. If you are feeding all the time, but then do you also need it? Do you need it? Remember, it is called multivitamins. It means you are giving vitamins, various vitamins packed together, and you are giving the birds. So 
to everything there can be overdose. The overdose may not come out with a nasty or grave side effects, but to everything there is overdose. As long as you have enough, don't have more than enough. You don't need more than enough. So some vitamins can actually interfere with the normal um, processes in the body of your birds. If you have, if you give your birds excess vitamins, for example, the synthetic vitamin, if you give them excess, for example, the poop will change color. It may be very dark brown or even black, and you'll be scared. You'll be scared. So it will also overwork their organs. They have to deal, the organ has to deal with lots of vitamins. So it's a lot of work. Also, they will be hungry. They will be doing like they are on drugs. Yeah. They'll be hungry and eating massively. And it's not all the time that that is beneficial. <laughs> Sometimes you don't, you don't wish that your birds are eating more. So to everything, you just have to, you just have to um, go by the recommended dosage. Okay, going by the last video on poor chick by our most popular brand of chick. I did not say so. <laughs> I did not say it's by the most popular. I said it's one of the most popular. Eh? Because I don't even know the most popular brand of chick. So maybe I'm still safe. All right, so I did not say by the most popular brand, but it's one of the most popular. You see, in the past few weeks, their performance, maybe not the past few weeks, but at least four more, four weeks ago to three weeks ago, I'm sure those birds, most of them didn't perform well. So now two weeks back and this last week, I'm not sure. I've not really gotten any reports. Most times people have to study, study their performance for like four weeks before they speak out. So I don't know if things have returned to normal. All right, so... If you want to improve the cheek growth, you just have to try. Use the growth promoters. I talked about the organic growth promoters in my videos. Talked about the use of cloves, the use of kind pepper, the use of um, black pepper. There are a lot of them. The use of egg emulsion. They use egg, lime, and molasses to make. They are just there. So you try to boost them. Let them eat more. Let them have those group promoters, preferably organic. So just give them and give them the best care. There's a secret that people are not maximizing. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. I'll tell you a secret before I close. And I'm not using this to brag. Maybe I'll not even go into the full details so that it doesn't sound like I'm bragging or I'm, I'm raising or I'm sounding any alarm. There was a time I got a particular set of birds from the same archery I got for somebody else. And he's one of the followers. He has been watching the videos. But the result I got, he still came back to ask me, is it, are you sure it's the same bird? Are you sure it is the same feet? His results were not the same with mine. There are some things that people don't pay attention to, and there's one in particular. I'm going to be making a video on it shortly. If you don't pay attention to it, especially during brooding period, the result will show. It will show. Somebody else reached out to me and was telling me how he did an accidental experiment. That is, he didn't mean to do that experiment, but it came out as an experiment and they found the results overwhelming. Some birds perform the same batch, the same feed, the same source. Some of them performed well, some of them did not perform well. Some, the ones that performed well were around one point, well, I can't remember exactly, but over one kg. The ones that did not perform well were around, is it 600 or 700? I think they, they had about more than 200 grams different. 
yeah, more than 200 grams difference. And just in just three weeks, yeah, in just three weeks, more than 200 grams difference. And the only variation was that singular thing. I'm not going to be mentioning it now, but it happened during brooding. So the attention that you give to your birds, to the, to the basic things that they need, it matters a lot beyond the feed. Forget the feed. Sometimes people get the most expensive feed and they are careless in brooding. You won't get the results. You will not start saying, ah, this feed is just expensive. It's nothing. And others are using it. They are getting results. So we have to pay more attention to how we raise the bear. So for you to get better growth, just give them more attention, more motivate them to eat more. <laughs> you give them group promoter. That's what those group promoters are doing. Most of the time, they are motivating them to, to eat more. Only a few of them, these are the two common ways that they work. Is that they motivate them to eat more or they improve the nutrient as uh, accessible to the chicks. The nutrient, the digestion process is better and the assimilation is better. So they are able to uh, utilize more of the nutrients in the feed. These of all the nutrients going into their poop. More of it is entering their system and it's turning to meat. Okay, so those are the two ways. So you try to maximize those two. Give them growth promoters and also give them the things that will aid further digestion, like probiotics, lab, lab, lactobacillus. So I think that will work. And also you put your ears on the ground. Try to know the actually that is performing well before you buy. Don't just buy because you took it last four months and they were fine. And you come back to there, you buy the same thing. You have to put your heels on the ground. Yeah. All right. Can someone buy... Can someone use 100 by 100 for poultry farm? I don't understand the 100 by 100. Is it uh, 100 by 100 feet? Is it a land? 100 by 100, I suppose it's a land, but is it in feet? Is it in meters? I need to know, please, if you can let me know. But 100 by 100 is a square. It's not really appropriate. Why? There's what we call um, is it trapping of air. Trapping of air. If the house is so wide on the East West, this is the East, this is the West, and it, it's, it's so long, it should not be so wide on the North South uh, axis. The North South, South axis has to be short so that the wind, the flow of the wind, the wind can blow in, maybe the cool wind is blowing on one side. Let's say this is the long axis. How do I do it? Okay, let's say this is the long axis. If the wind is blowing like this, it should easily go out. But if this part too is so wide, the wind is blowing, the cool wind is blowing, the hot one is already in the house, it can't really get out because the velocity, I don't know whether that is a big word, the speed, the way the, the cool breeze is coming, the force at which it's driving coolness inside it may not be big enough to drive out hot air. So in the end, the cool wind is coming and it gets into the midst of your pen and the whole place is choked with hot air, but the velocity cannot drive the hot air out. So it's just trapped. So the whole place will still turn out hot. All right. So that's one of the major reasons for having one part long and one part narrow. So 100 by 100 is a no, no, no. I said maybe you are doing... You're operating a closed house system where your your ventilation shafts are <clears throat> automated. Okay, so it's not ideal. You have to split it. You can have hundred by thirty. Yeah, hundred by thirty is fine. Yeah, you have said land, but I don't know if it's in feet. But I believe that explanation answers it. That square is not good. You can have square for a small chicken house. But not 100 by 100, definitely not 100 by 100. If you're having 10 by 10, 20 by 20, you can manage that, but not 100 by 100. Anything, that narrow part should not be more than, in most cases, it should not be more than 30, 35. 
Hey, maximum. Even 40 is crazy. 30, 35 is good. And that's in feet. 30, 35 feet is good. If it's going to 40 and beyond, it's crazy. You, you will be needing automatic ventilation uh, system. All right, so we might be closing the session in a minute. Let me see if there's... I, I just need interesting questions. I've, I think I've been able to answer all the questions I got here. But if I see any other interesting question, wow, I'm going to answer it. Okay, so... All right, so once again, if the number to reach preferably on WhatsApp is on the screen. DIY Agri, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. So um, next week, we're going to be having the session. It's not first Friday, so we're going to be having the session next week. And if you have not liked the live stream, please go ahead and click the like button. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. So go ahead and click the like button if you have not liked the live stream. Also, do well to click the notification bell so that you get updated. You'll be notified each time I post new videos. All right, so uh, I think no, no more question is coming. <clears throat> Okay, so is there anything I want to give you before going? Is there anything I want to give you? Let me search my heart. Mm. Okay. All right, so well, I think what I'll do, we'll just wait until I drop that um, information on feed. It's going to bless every one of us information of feed especially those who are willing to get their hands dirty yeah okay so we would be throwing that to the house shortly make sure you like the stream before we end it and um next friday we'll be discussing something interesting even though i'm not sure yet what it's going to be but i'll try to post it before I try to post the notification before Thursday, maybe Wednesday or so, so that we'll get prepared for it and um, might be able to whet our appetite before the class. All right, so thank you once again for joining another episode of the School of Poetry. It's been a wonderful time with you all. And uh, don't forget, I mentioned if you are interested in the organic poetry course, you can reach me on WhatsApp immediately after the live stream. Or anytime, just let me know you're interested. And if you want to also join the next batch of the Feed Formulation Masterclass, uh, you can do well to join or notify me on WhatsApp. I'll, I'll book you for it. I'll book you for it, and uh, that would be it. All right, so somebody is asking quickly before I go this smell. How to get it out. If you're talking about smell, odor, I think I'll just leave you with a video. I'll just leave you with a video that will help you. Okay, so you just... I'll leave you with this video. I talked about how to control odor. So I'll leave you with that video. That should help. All right. So thank you all once again. And uh, this will be all for tonight. Hopefully we'll see you again in the course of the week. Like I always bring you new videos from time to try time. I try as much as possible to do minimum of two videos a week. If possible, I do three. But um, as much as I can put out, I'll do all right, so thank you all for your support. It's been a wonderful time, and uh, I see this school of poetry growing into something bigger. And um, hopefully we'll be able to bring or we'll get to that point where we'll bring even uh, other people to come and discuss. Maybe we'll bring a veterinary doctor or a colleague in the, 
in the field and we discuss, we talk about things together and, you know, there's, there are great plans and as God enables me, <clears throat> excuse me, as God enables me, I'm going to be bringing everything out to you all. It's passion and it's passion for me first before before whatever it can bring, it can be bring money, it can bring fame, it can bring anything, but it's passion for me first. And each time I get calls from people telling me, okay, it's because of you I started poetry, or it's because of you I've been able to expand my poetry, or it's because of you this batch I, I had the least mortality, it's because of you I got good birds when I booked chicks from you, it's because of you I did this, that is just it for me. So... Thank you all for joining, and I'm going to see you in the next poetry school session or school of poetry session by God's grace. But before then, I'm sure we'll be seen in the course of the week. Or, uh, yeah, this weekend now, we'll be seen in the weekend, over the weekend, and in the course of the week before the next Friday. All right, so bless you all, and see you when we see next. Thank you, and bye bye.